forecast the cost at completion of your projects. What cost forecasting methods do you use? Hello, I am Shore Gorbani. I'm the founder and director of Project Control Academy, where we help you master your knowledge and skills in project controls and take your career to the next level of success. When it comes to cost forecasting, there are various methods that you can use. Uh, methods such as risk-based methods, regression-based methods, and performance-based methods. The focus of today's presentation is on performance-based forecasting methods using earned value management. Earned value management, as you might know, is a well-known technique for measuring the cost and schedule performance of a project and to predict the project's future outcome in terms of cost and to some extent schedule. If earned value management is implemented properly in a project, it can give you early warning signals on the health of your project. So you can take proactive actions before your schedule starts slipping or you start having some cost issue with your project. So it's a very powerful tool as long as you know how to implement that properly. And I assume you already know what earned value management is. If not, no worries. I have already put together a 10-day free training uh, series for you that you can check it out on earned value management. The link for this video uh, for this video series is either down below or right here on this training so that you can uh, check it out if uh, you want to learn more about earned value management. Now, going back to the topic of today's presentation on cost forecasting and forecasting the cost at completion of a project, let's better understand what we are trying to forecast here. When we are talking about the cost at completion, what I'm referring to here. So let's look at this project, for example. This is time now uh, here, and we have distributed our approved budget over time, which has given us our planned value or PV. Plan value is basically the time phase budget distributed over the plan duration of our project. And because we are distributing the budget over time, uh, our total plan value at the end of the project should always match our approved progress based budget or in air and value management terminology, it is known as budget at completion or BAC. Now, another element in this project that we have measured is our actual cost. The cost incurred for the work that is um, done to date. Uh, basically, the cost of what we have spent to date on the project is actual cost. Now, I have a question for you. Based on these two elements that we have in this project, knowing our budget, uh, the distribution of our budget over time, and knowing how much we have spent to date on this project, can we forecast our budget at completion or how much money we need at the end of this project? Well, by having just these two elements, you know, the only thing we can get out of it is how much money is left in our pocket, right? We have our budget and how much we have spent, so all we have is how much money is left to finish this project according to our budget. But it does not necessarily give us the true budget at completion because we haven't taken into account our performance, our progress, and the value of what has been accomplished to date, right? And the true remaining of the work, the true dollar value of the work that is left. That's why we need another element called earned value, uh, which is basically the value of what you have earned, the value of what you have accomplished in the project to date, in order to forecast um, the cost at completion. So by cost at completion, what I mean here is based on our performance to date, based on how we have performed to date and based on our spending and plan, we would like to forecast what would be our cost at the end of the project. So in Aaron Value terminologies, it is called Estimate at Completion or EAC. So that's what we are trying to estimate here and to come up with in this training together. So this question mark goes back to our estimate at completion or how much money we need at the end of the project based on our performance and what we have performed to date on the project. 
Now, I need your help to come up with the formula of EAC together and I'm sure you can help me to bring this formula from scratch and create this EAC formula together from scratch and to brainstorm and come up with a formula. Are you ready for that? Awesome. Okay, the good news is there is a universal formula for a forecast at completion or estimate at completion that I am pretty sure that all of you know. And that simple formula, I would like to call it a universal formula. It is the money that has already been spent plus the money that will be spent is the estimated cost at completion, right? The money that we have already spent and the money that we are going to spend to finish the project will give us the estimated cost at completion. Simple, right? So if I want to translate that to earn value equation, it's going to be my actual cost or AC plus ETC, which is estimate to complete, give me my estimate at completion or EAC, right? So let's see what we have in this equation. We would like to try to come up with EAC, right? So do we have our actual cost? Yes, we do. We can get that information from our financial systems uh, because that's the money we have spent and we can get that from our financial records. Now, if we can come up with the formula for our ETC or estimate to complete, then we can easily um, come up with EAC um, calculation, right? It's just a matter of adding an actual cost to our ETC or if you have ETC it just uh, or if you have EAC it's just a matter of adding actual cost or subtracting actual cost to come up with either ETC or EAC. So as long as we can come up with ETC uh, then we have our EAC or estimate at completion, right? Now let's um, assess different ways of coming up with our estimate to complete or the money that we need to finish the project. Now I need your help with this. Let's come up with this first formula. Do you think ETC or estimate to complete is our budget at completion or approved budget minus our actual cost? What do you think of this formula? Does it give me my remaining budget that I need to finish the project? Well, yes and no. First of all, budget at completion is my budget minus what I have spent. So it gives me the money that's left in my pocket. And that formula would be valid uh, for ETC early on, really early on on the project when I don't have that much scope changes going on and I still starting the project, let's say 5-10% of the project. So that's still a valid formula. So here you go, we come up with the first formula for ETC. But in this formula, we haven't taken into account the performance, right? Uh, because we don't, we haven't considered how much work is left to be done. The only thing that this formula is giving us is the uh, amount of money that is left in our pocket, but not necessarily how much work is left to be done. So to come up with that formula to consider the amount of work that's left, what should I need to add in this equation or to change in this equation? Yes, I need to introduce earn value into this equation. So, um, and sorry, I forgot to show you that. That shows me the remaining money, the remaining budget. So if I want to introduce earn value into this equation, so it's going to be my budget minus Yes, earn value. So the difference of my budget minus the value of my accomplishment gives me what? That's right, the value of the work remaining. And that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? My estimate to complete. So it's my budget minus my earn gave me my estimate to complete or the true value of the remaining work. So, so far we came up with two formulas together. One was budget minus actual and another one was budget minus earned. Both of these formulas work really well at the early stages of the project, up to 20 to 30% of the project. Um, as we don't have that much changes going on at early on or we are starting learning on what's going on in our project. Um, so, but as we progress through the project and we start seeing changes, we start 
having some performance issues or something going on in our project, then these two formulas are not really that valid because it doesn't take into consideration our true project performance. Let me ask you a question. If my project performance is bad, do I need more money to finish the job or I need less money? That's right, I need more money to finish the job. So in order to come up with an accurate forecast for ETC, I need to take into account my performance, right? So the right formula for my estimate to complete would be not only budget minus earn, the true remaining work, but also I need to factor that in by the performance factor for the project. And if I have that, let's say if I have a good performance or my performance factor is over one, then ETC would be less, right? I don't need that much money because I'm doing really well. Or on the other hand, if my performance is not that good or if it's uh, less than one, then yes, ETC will go up. So that's why I need to factor the performance factor into this, into this equation to come up to consider first of all the performance of the project for forecasting and to come up with more accurate forecast. Now how about EAC? How can I calculate EAC or estimate at completion? Yes, it's just a matter of adding the actual cost to the ETC formula. So this is the universal formula that you can use for your estimate at completion. So estimate at completion is actual cost plus budget minus earned over your performance factor. But now you might question, okay, great, but what is the performance factor here? Is it cost performance index? CPI? Is it Schedule Performance Index? SPI? Is it the combination of both? What do you mean by performance factor here? And if you had that question in your mind, great job, that's a very good question. Um, so the answer to this question uh, will be covered in the next episode of Project Control Mastery. It's going to be covered on uh, performance-based cost forecasting um, video training where I'm going to break down even the EAC formula further for you and show you exactly what you need to use at different stages of your project. And to be honest with you, I'm going to share uh, with you based on what I have really truly experienced on projects um, and you might not see that on textbook or something like that. Uh, and that's one of the most common misconceptions that most practitioners would face when it comes to cost forecasting using the same formula all over uh, in different stages of the project, which is not right. So I'm going to go over all of this consideration for your forecasting and how to come up with an accurate forecast for your project considering the performance in the next episode. So stay tuned for that episode. And as always, if you have any question or comment, I welcome your comments. If you have any experience that you would like to share related to this, please share those down below. And if you have questions, definitely ask them there so I can assist you as well. And if you found this uh, training valuable, please um, uh, give me a high five by liking this video and sharing it with your connections. So until the next episode of Project Control Mastery with another uh, method of cost forecasting or basically by going further into details of this EAC formula and showing you how to forecast properly, do your best in everything that you do my friend and make a difference. Hello, this is Shore. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you continue to get updates every time that I release new training for you. Simply hit the subscribe button and you will be all set. If you have ever wondered uh, or wanted to learn how to become distinguished for your ability to control and lead projects to a successful completion, I'd like to give you something special that I'm sure you're going to love. I have developed series of training videos on air and value management absolutely for free. Yes, for free. If you have ever wondered what air and value management is and how it can assist you in understanding the true status of your projects, make sure that you watch the EVM training series that I have put together for you.
Just click on the link uh, below this post or go to projectcontroltraining.com forward slash EVM free training and then enter your name and email so I can email you the training video series. Thanks again for tuning in everyone. Until next time that I see you, do your best in everything that you do and make a difference.